If you remember, a few videos ago I made my second 72 volt Razor scooter. Now, the scooter has been super fun to ride around, but the battery has started cutting out for some reason. If we look at the footage of when I made this battery pack, we can see why this is probably happening. The main culprit are these bad spot welds. All I did then was lay a piece of nickel across the terminal like that, and then spot weld it. And when you do this, all the current goes from this lead, through the nickel, and out the other lead. And this just heats up the nickel, it doesn't really heat up the cell and gives you a bad spot weld. What you need to do is get some nickel with a slot in it, like that, so that when you spot weld, the current has to go from this lead, through the nickel, into the cell, and then back out. And this heats up the nickel and the cell and gives you a good weld. There's some other parts about my spot welding that isn't very good. Right here I just blew through the nickel for some reason. All over the place I'm spot welding right on top of the plastic. And then right here I'm spot welding right in the middle of the negative terminal of the cell, which is a bad idea. I think the scooter deserves a new, more powerful battery. Conveniently, I just upgraded the controller on my stunt e-bike, so now I have this extra 50 amp controller I can use. This controller plus a new battery should get that scooter going faster than ever. The first thing I did was paint the controller since the old controller was painted and I thought it looked pretty good. To build the newer, higher discharge battery for the Razor, I got these EVE cells. They're only 2 amp hours, which is less capacity than the old cells, but they're 30 amp discharge, which is a lot more than the old cells. I got the spacers from the old battery, I got some 0.1 millimeter copper, and some pre-cut nickel, and then I got a 50 amp BMS. Because I'm only doing 17 amps per cell, I decided to just do some copper strips like this instead of a whole copper sheet, and then some nickel on top to spot weld it on. Since this new BMS is going to be thicker than the old one, I don't think I can put it on the top anymore, so I'm going to put it on the end. I think I can probably put a copper sheet that goes directly to the BMS, but we'll see. For that piece of copper, I started out with this paper template. After that, I got some 0.1 millimeter that I've been using this whole time, and then I got some 0.5 millimeter, super thick stuff, for the main current carrying part. And I'm just going to solder them together. Finally, I'm done spot welding. Now it's time to fold the battery. My copper sheet ended up fitting perfectly, which is great because this is super compact. The balance wires were a bit tricky, but I got it figured out in the end. This battery looks a bit weird with that BMS sticking out, but I think it'll fit fine in the scooter, so it's not really a problem. Nothing like some good old shrink wrap. I decided to just skip the connector and go straight to the terminals since the wires are so short. Looks like I got lucky with the fitment. The only thing that could be too tall is the BMS here, but the bounce wires go here and here and it leaves a perfect gap in the middle for this piece. Once I installed the battery in the controller, the scooter was ready to ride. But there's one more thing I wanted to change. Because I kept standing on the back fender of the scooter, this piece got bent down. So I put in this reinforcement piece here. While doing this, I somehow managed to blow the brake line. I don't really know how this happened because my ground clamp was nowhere near the brakes. Luckily, I had a spare from the other scooter. Gotta do a top speed run right away while I got full battery. I'm gonna try it on the 360 cam. I don't know how this is gonna work. I guess I'll just stick it in my pocket. Let me try some circle wheelies. I tried to do them with the selfie stick right here, but it was just in the way, so it wasn't gonna work. Oh, that was close. Going crazy. How about the jump into a wheelie trick from the last scooter video? Let me see if I can pull that off again. Oh, almost looped it, but I got it. I had to swing by the hill climb so we can hit that.
No, I'm gonna need more speed than that. In conclusion, I think this is a really fun scooter. I love that it's the same weight as a stock scooter with all that extra power. I think the funnest thing to do with it is just do wheelies everywhere. You can put it in 1800 watts so it isn't so crazy powerful. And if you loop it, you can just walk with it. Just like that. So it is super forgiving. My brother and I tested it in the snow and it didn't work too well. Now that that scooter's done, we can focus on this scooter. This is an old rental scooter. The guy who had it before me fried the battery when he was trying to work on it, so he just left it sitting in his garage. He was packing up to move and he saw me riding by on this scooter, so he just decided to give me the scooter for free. Once I took the scooter home, I removed the stock battery that was in the stem. I don't really like this design because all the weight's up high and it makes the scooter feel heavier than it actually is. After that, I converted it to rear wheel drive. Taking the rear wheel and putting it on the front was pretty easy. All I did was grind that little section there to make it fit. And taking the motor from the front and putting it on the back just required some custom torque arms. After I did all that, I realized that if I cut a slot out at the bottom of the deck of the scooter, I could fit a much bigger battery compared to what would fit in the stem. So I made this 3 parallel 20 series battery out of my favorite 10 amp discharge 3.2 amp hour EU cells. However, this isn't the actual battery, that's just a representation of about what the size would be. Because after I made this battery, I didn't seal it up good enough and a bunch of water got in it and it completely ruined it. Once I realized the battery was ruined, I decided to take it apart and recycle the cells. A few weeks later, a friend saw one of my videos and decided to give me a battery project he had given up on. So I decided to break it down into sections of six cells and build this battery, which I'll put the footage in right here. I don't have much to say about this battery build. It's pretty simple, and if you've watched my other videos, you should know the process by now. I do want to talk about two other videos I'm working on. One of them is a small electric motorcycle that is definitely my best build so far. The build is totally done, and I just need more riding footage before I start editing the video, but it's very cold outside and it will be for a while, so that has to wait. The other video is a 26 inch fat tire e-bike that I'm making specifically to ride on sand or snow. The river near me has these great sandbars that would be so fun to ride on if I had a bike that could actually ride on sand. In my recent Stealth Bomber clone video, I tried to ride on the sandbar, but that bike is just too heavy and the tires are too thin. I'm still waiting on parts for that build, so it will be a while before that video comes out. Other than those two builds, I'm open for suggestions on what I should build next. I actually built a mid-drive e-bike a few months ago with a BBS02 motor kit, but it was so slow and basic that I didn't think it deserved a video about it. I would love to build a more powerful mid-drive e-bike, but I would have to build it using a nice mountain bike that can handle the power, and nice mountain bikes are thousands of dollars so that's out of my budget. I think an electric mini bike would be a fun build. I have an extra MY1020 motor that I could use, and the fabrication should be super easy. I eventually want to build a full size electric dirt bike, but that will be pretty expensive so it also has to wait. What do you guys want to see me build? I know some of you want me to do a simple e-bike build that anyone could do, but I don't really think it's worth it for me. There are already tons of videos out there of simple builds, and one of my favorite parts of building stuff like this is building the batteries. And I can't expect a beginner to build their own battery, so I'm not really interested in doing builds like that. I would rather build something crazy that no one else has made, so give me your wildest ideas and I might end up building one of them. Also, thanks everybody who has left a supportive comment. I really try to make my videos stand out from the rest, and it's great to see that my viewers appreciate it. After I built this battery, I realized I had this scooter with no battery, so I slapped the battery on it. Now, this battery does work fine, but it's only about 20 amp discharge because these cells are only 3.7 amp discharge each, so that makes this scooter only 1500 watts. That's only 3 times the stock power I need at least 5 times, so I'm going to be building a new battery with the same cells that I built that scooter's battery with, these 2 amp hour 30 amp discharge, and this new amp BMS. 
This BMS is way more current than I'm going to need for this build, but I've heard that these BMSs are super tunable, so I should be able to turn the current down to whatever I want. If this does work good, I'll definitely use more of these in the future. There's also some other reasons I'm changing this build. First off, this battery is super janky just having it zip tied on like this. Second off, I really don't like this controller. This controller is a VESC controller, which means it's super programmable. It's a 75100 Pro from Flipsky, and it has some things I don't like, such as you have to buy a $40 anti-spark disconnect if you want the ability to turn the scooter off. Like right now, I'm just leaving it plugged in because this anti-spark connector here fried immediately when I used it. So I have to choose between leaving it plugged in and plugging in this anti-spark over and over and just sparking it nonstop, which will eventually ruin the connector. That's annoying. Plus you have to pay for the app or use your computer. So I paid for the app to try and program it, but I realized it wouldn't work on the app. So I had to go get my laptop anyways. So it's just been kind of annoying to use. Lucky for me, I just pulled this far driver off my other scooter. So once I slap that on there with a new battery tucked under there, nice and neat, and a new throttle, multimeter, and ignition switch, it should be good to go. Here's the layout of the new battery. Since it's only four amp hours, you shouldn't be able to ride for very long, but that doesn't really matter because the motor will overheat after a while anyways. So that's fine by me. Here's how it fits in the frame. Nice and flush. However, it could fit even better if I grind off these little pieces here. To start building the battery, I cut out some 0.1 millimeter copper and some 0.15 millimeter pre-cut nickel so I can spot weld it on. For the main positive and negative, I soldered some wire to some copper and I'm going to spot weld it on. Now it's time to wire the BMS. This BMS can work with 8S packs all the way up to 22S packs, so I need to configure mine for a 20S pack. The way to do that is cut off wire number 12, connect wire 11 and 13, and connect wire 23 and 24. So I just did that before wiring anything to make sure I don't mess up. The BMS came with four temperature sensors and one switch connection, but I don't think I'm going to use them. This battery is so small and the cells aren't doing nearly the rated continuous discharge current, so the battery shouldn't really get hot and I shouldn't ever have to reset it with the switch. After connecting the balance wires, I plugged it in to charge to make sure everything was working right. At this point, I also connected to the app to try it out and I can tell right away I'm going to be using more of these BMSs in the future because this app is awesome. I can see all the currents, all the voltages, all the temperatures. I can disable and enable the charge and discharge MOSFETs and there's a bunch of settings to change to make the battery work perfectly. I added some fish paper on the side so I could put the battery in the frame without it shorting out to check the fitment. It looks like it's all going to fit good, so I'm going to wrap the battery part up with tape and then shrink wrap this entire thing all the way up to the BMS. Before I wrapped it with tape, I decided to cut off the mounting tabs on the BMS so that it would be more slim. Well, here it is. It's definitely not the prettiest. I tried to seal the ends with hot glue a lot better. I ripped it here on accident, but I sealed that all up. I think it'll work. I mounted the battery in the scooter, and I was going to start taping it up with this black tape, but I realized first I should cover up the battery with some protection, so I got this little metal sheet. That should help a bit if anyone bottoms out the scooter or any rocks hit it. Now I'm going to use this black tape and start taping up the whole scooter. After wrapping it in tape, it looks pretty good. I got this rubber piece that's supposed to go on there, but I think I'm just going to put this grippy tape on. To mount the controller, I just used an aluminum piece up there to bolt it through the top holes, and then I just put a zip tie through the bottom holes. Since all the wires are so close, I just decided to use some copper to try and make them all fit. I got it all finished up, and I think the exposed copper looks pretty cool, so I'm not going to cover it up. I also finished all the smaller wires. A tip when soldering wires on something like this with a joint that turns is you want to turn it all the way so it's as tight as possible, and then solder the wires to make sure you have a lot of slack. The stock throttle and region are super worn out, plus I need an ignition and a voltmeter, so I put on my favorite thumb throttle, ignition, and voltmeter combo. 
I also want to be able to control the region, so I took a brake lever with no brake line with the switch in it, so I can just push it like that and get some region. My first impressions of the scooter is that I'm surprised at how much torque it has. When I had the 30 amp battery in the VESC controller, I could only get the motor to take about 55 phase amps, and that was probably just because I didn't know how to tune the VESC right, but now that I got the 35 amp battery, a little more line amps, and the far driver, it can do peaks of 100 phase amps, which is pretty crazy. All that torque makes the throttle super touchy, and it's always trying to wheelie when you're going slow speeds. And I'm not leaning back at all or pulling up at all. I'm completely stiff, like leaning forward. So it's pretty wild. The one thing that is really bad is the regen brake. It's only about eight amps because that's as much as these cells can do. So you really got to make sure you don't like fly down a hill and need to hit the brakes quick. But it's totally drivable if you just keep that in mind. This scooter's main problem is the motor overheating, but since the battery is so small, it probably will run out of battery before you really overheat. However, I've only really ridden it in 40 degree weather at the hottest, so I'll have to wait to the summer to see how bad it really is. In conclusion, I think this scooter is pretty fun, but it could be better. Say if you used 3 amp hour, 15 amp discharge cells in the battery, that would be 30 amps of discharge and 6 amps of capacity, which would be a lot better. On the other hand, if you wanted more power, you could put a motor from another scooter on the rear, keep the motor on the front, and then get a VESC that can drive two motors, tune it right, and that thing would be really fast. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.